A subset S of Rn is said to be an affine subspace of Rn if S can be written as P plus V for some P in Rn and a vector subspace V of Rn. Here, P plus V means the set of all possible vectors obtained from P plus another vector in V. As you might see from this definition, an affine subspace is simply a vector subspace translated. And here are some examples. A single element of Rn forms an affine subspace. In this case, V will simply be the vector space consisting of only the zero vector. And if we are given an m by n matrix A and an m tuple B, where m is a positive integer, then the set of solutions Ax equal to B, provided that this system is consistent, is an affine subspace. And it's not difficult to see that this is the case. Let x prime be a solution to the system Ax equal to B. And we call this setup here S. Then S is simply x prime plus n, where n is the null space of A. If the affine subspace S is not equal to Rn, we say S is a proper affine subspace. What's interesting is that every proper affine subspace can be written in this form. And we'll state that result as a theorem. The proof of this result is a straightforward exercise in linear algebra, and the details will be left as an exercise. There's the notion of an affine hull of a set. Given the subset of Rn, the affine hull of S is simply the intersection of all the affine subspaces containing S. It can be shown that the affine hull of a set is an affine subspace. Now let's see what is the affine hull of two points in Rn. Because the affine hull is going to be an affine subspace, we know that the affine hull of U and V must be of the form P plus V, where P is an element of Rn and V is a vector subspace of Rn. Now we can set P equal to either U or W, and let's set P equal to U. And W must be obtainable from P by a vector in V. And so the vector space must contain W minus U. And since this is a vector in a vector subspace, all scalar multiples of this must also be in V. And so the affine hull of U and W must contain all the vectors of the following form. And that means the affine hull contains the line through U and W. But then the line through U and W is an affine subspace, and it contains both points U and W. And so we can conclude that the intersection must be precisely the line through U and W. Therefore, the affine hull of U and W is the line through U and W. More generally, there's a simple algebraic description of the affine hull. Let us first define the affine combination of a finite number of vectors. Suppose v1 up to vk are vectors in Rn, lambda1 up to lambda k are real numbers, such that the sum of these lambdas is 1, then lambda1 times v1 plus all the way to lambda k times vk is an affine combination of v1 up to vk. Once we have defined an affine combination, we can state what the affine hull of a set is. The affine hull of a subset S of Rn is given by all possible affine combinations of a finite number of elements of S. In other words, to form the affine hull, you just take all possible finite subset of vectors of S and form affine combinations of them. This result is easier to work with than forming the intersection of all possible affine subspaces containing S.